guys how are you guys doing look these pink pink glasses about to be worn out it's about to be fall time in a couple of more weeks i'm going to switch to my black or my i'll show y'all I, mean, I need to clean my glasses i'm going to switch to my black frames or i may even do these I may do these when I switch it because the, the vision is off just a little I have to switch them over the weekend so that my eyes can get used to it maybe I'll sleep in girl that's a damn thing but anyway y'all enough of that let's get right into it y'all know how we do this is another chit chat I have actually a lot to talk about more so than what I'm watching on tv and all this other drama what I'm going to be doing is um, I did a video for you guys a couple of days ago showing you how I moisturize my hair and preparing it for a style. Now, this is literally like two days afterwards so my hair is done. It is air dry. So now what I do, I feel like in order to get a really good style, the base of your hair, the base of your hair has to be prepared or pretty good. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get a great style if my hair is, girl, look at all this gray hair. And I pluck it out. For every one I pluck out, I find a hundred more. The reason why I do this, y'all, is my, my gray hair is a totally different texture, too. Look how straight that, it is so weird. So it's curly, curly, curly. Can y'all see that? And then look how straight it gets. There's no definition in that. It's going to be interesting, but overall, my um, my gray hair is coming in totally different texture. Once I get so much gray hair, it's, not, it's going to be impossible for me to pluck. I'm going to go ahead and accept it and completely go gray. Um, it is what it is. Let me take off my watch. So anyway, you guys, I'm preparing my hair for a style. I'm going to be doing a braid out in a couple more days using these two products, okay? So all I'm going to do now is just go ahead and just section my hair off, moisturize it with water. So I'm not really adding any leave-in products, I should say. Um, and I'm just going to make the section here. The section is basically a little bit smaller. Um, and look at this. Look at my hair. Smells good. Ooh, there's some, is this, what is that? Oh, that's oil. That's why it's so shiny. All right, let me spray it with water, lightly mist it. I do feel like my edges are kind of thin and I know y'all are like, well, girl, but no, it is. My edges are starting to thin out a little bit and that's more gray hair but it is what it is so y'all know how we do this i talk about what's going on in my personal life what i'm watching on tv and what i'm watching on youtube so hmm how do how could how can i say this my child is the class clown <sighs> a lot of this started last year when he was in school and jv is the popular kid um, he's popular because he makes people laugh and they find him funny. And, you know, they know that he has a little YouTube channel, even though the channel has like 200, 300, I think like almost 300 subscribers, but to the babies, that's a lot. You know what I mean? So sometimes he does videos just for them so that they can watch it. And they do watch his channel on free day at school. So I got a message from his teacher yes, yesterday basically stating that, you know, she's having a hard time with him. He's laughing. He's making jokes. Um, he's playing around with his stuff instead of listening and paying attention in class. Um, and so by the time she passes out the work, he's getting everything done. So then she has to sit with him one-on-one -on -one to go over the material again. And so she's had to break apart some kids again so that they can work, you know, and stay focused. So JB does have ADHD. He has dyslexia. He has a couple of other learning um, challenges to where I forgot the, the right terminology for. But basically, if you tell him something, what is it called? It's a process delay. And he may say that he understand it, stand what you're saying, but really he doesn't. 
And so, and his teachers are aware of this. Um, what's the point, girl? So when he came home yesterday, well, first of all, I rode with my husband to go pick him up. Because mm -mm, typically I don't. That's his duty. He picks up JV. But sometimes I do ride with him. And especially when I find out he's been acting like an ass clown at school, I show up like the ops. I remember last year when we had this problem, baby, it was, uh, it was the winter time. I had on my jogging suit. I had my glasses down. I had um, my hood on. Girl, I was in the back waiting for him. Like... <laughs> I'm part of some mafia. He was like, hi, mama. I said, oh, don't hide me. Get your butt in here. And he was, got quiet. Hi, mama. Get your butt in here. Let me talk to you. So that's what I did yesterday. And I'm like, well, what's going on? You know, he seemed a little surprised because according to him, he's like, she didn't tell me how I was acting. I said, oh, so, so now you're calling your teacher a liar. Girl, you know, black parents just getting right to <laughs> He's like, look, he's just looking at me. So, you know, she sent me the message, but I need to talk to you in person. You guys, I'm a very, 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 and I'm giving you some words of advice. If you don't, if you're not a mom yet and you want to be a mom, if you're not a parent yet and you want to be a parent, you have to be completely involved and immersed in your child's education. I am, I've always been this way. I'm that mom that shows up to every event, every school event. I show up early. I, sh I stay late. I know the parents. I know the kids. I know the kids by name. I'm looking at the kids eye to eye. Y yeah, I'm going to the other classes and talking to the kids because I need I need y'all to know that I'm here. You need to you need to know my presence. Okay, I'm very involved in my child's education. I've always been this way. So anyway, I spoke to him. I let her know we, we talked to him. Um, I went a step further. Like I said in this morning, I wanted to talk to her one on one to see how things are going, letting her know, you know, that we had a discussion. And again, it's taking it a step further, I'm gonna pop up tomorrow and stay there for a good 30 minutes and observe him. Now, of course, he's gonna be on his good behavior because I'm there, but he does not like me to be there in the classroom. Oh. Let's jump into it. So I shared on my community page a couple of days ago how I have just been so emotional lately. Now, some stuff is warranted, but other times it's like, girl, I'm looking at videos of other people's babies and pictures of other people's kids and just stuff in general, and I'm crying. I mean, extremely emotional. Um, I'm just noticing some changes with my body, too. I'm growing a lot more hair on my face like it's not long but i can feel it like a, a couple of chin hairs are pumping pumping up so i gotta shave my, my chin hair once a week i'm like i, I can't have no three o'clock shadow that's the shit we're not going for okay i can't be looking like wanda from you remember wanda from living color i can't do that so so i'm up in my skin regimen but i know a lot of this is hormones so y'all i feel like i like i said on my community post if i for sure if I was young and fertile, and the reason why I say I'm fertile is because I am a high risk when it comes to pregnancy. Even when I got pregnant with JB, I was high risk because I suffered a miscarriage prior to getting pregnant with him. Then once I got pregnant with him, I was a high risk just due to the miscarriage because I literally had gotten pregnant within, I think we, I got pregnant within three months of the miscarriage. And then with that pregnancy, I was in so much pain. They couldn't figure out what the pain was. I think I know what it is. I think it was um, an ovarian cyst. Because I that's another thing. I have reoccurring ovarian cyst. So that happened. So girl, what's the point? So I can't get pregnant, girl. I, it's hard for me to get pregnant. I can. I shouldn't say that. I can get pregnant. But it's a bit challenging for me to get pregnant. But baby, this is the thing. I hear so many stories of women who think that they're going through menopause and then they end up being pregnant. Let me tell you something. I'm not going to be able to handle a, a baby right now. I just, it no, it cannot. So one of the things that I'm finding myself doing, and I haven't told you guys just because I haven't, I just haven't. But I literally have had to take a pregnancy test every, I would say at this point, I'm taking a pregnancy test every three months. I'm getting my cycle still. That's not a problem. I know TMI. I am still getting the cycle, but my cycles are all over the place. They're not as, 
they're not they're inconsistent okay my cycles are inconsistent they are extremely heavy no i don't have pcos or whatever but they are heavy i am cramping i may should go to the dark tell my um uh what do you call it my lady parts doctor <laughs> My OBGYN, girl, my gynecologist, Lady Porch, Dr. Vivian, get your shit together. You act like you don't need to go to school. So um, this is some conversations that I should have with them. I know. But yeah, I'm feeling it. But the only thing I will say, too, with me being this way is I am always cold. So I'm not getting like really hot. I've always been just a cold person. Um, and so I should be taking iron and stuff like that for it because I'm always cold. I would have, oh, here we go. This is my little sweater that I put on at least once or twice a week. It is 100 degrees here in Dallas. So, yeah, when I'm outside, I mean, yesterday, when was that? Yesterday, we were at a girl at Whataburger, and we wondered why I haven't lost this weight. But then we were at Whataburger, JB and I, and I'm sitting inside waiting. And I was like, I am so cold. And I noticed the people in front of me turned around. They're like, what? I like ignore me. I was cold, very cold. So, who child experiencing this stuff? Yes. Um, like I said, cycles are inconsistent, extremely emotional. Yeah, but hey, my best friend had her baby in her forties. I think my best friend was forty-one when she had her last child. Um, I know someone else who I know, know plenty of women, plenty of women. My other friend, Leah, she had her twins when she was 42. I look at that because she ended up, I'm not going to get into it, but she had her twins at 42. Uh, I used to work with someone. She had her last baby in her 40s. But let me tell you something, the way that my um, patience is set up, the way that I like to have wine is set up, I... I, I <laughs> I'm not gonna be y'all. If God blesses me, thank you, Jesus. But I'm one and done. I really am. So you know, hopefully, my breasts are sore. The only thing I know, I'm saying, doing to you, the only thing that I know for sure, when I was the both times I was pregnant, my feet swelled up, and that's how I could really tell. My feet swelled swelled up. Yeah. My and it was fast. Like I was only six weeks pregnant with the first one and my my feet were already swollen up child so oh y'all that's that so we'll see you know jb doesn't need no siblings he got he got a bunch of cousins so he's good okay he's good so <laughs> what i'm watching on youtube so look you guys i want to figure out what's going on with the green beauty channel i hope she's okay um because she's in hawaii and due to the stuff that's going on there I tried to find her personal account on Instagram and I couldn't because I was going to reach out to her. She's not accepting DMs on her business account. But, so I need to find her personal account. I know I'm, I'm subscribed to that too. To figure out what she's doing and how she's doing. Um, I'm going to be very careful how I approach this. Chanel Diane is back on YouTube. Chanel Diane was very popular on Instagram and kind of popular on um, YouTube and her channel is now called Becoming Chanel, I believe that's the name. So she was all on the forums, Lipstick Alley and all of that a couple of years ago for scamming people. I can't even remember what type of deal it was. I think it was the thing where you go in together on something and then, and it was a lot of money. You would go in purchasing something or even when it comes, hair, duh, what I'm talking about, hair, she was selling hair, wigs, bundles. And I think she was even selling like a, she was doing that where I can teach you how to have your own business coaching basically coaching on how to be an entrepreneur and specifically for hair so um there was a lot of scamming going on and they were talking about it on facebook and of course on instagram she was taking people's money and not giving it back um and so black women being the fbi cia agents that they are baby they did not stop they created instagram pages specifically on specific specifically on this individual and basically saying how she's a scammer 
they started bringing up all of her old history, her arrests and stuff like this. I'm not going to get into the detail of that, but if you want to figure it out, it's on the internet. Everything is there. So she posted recently, meaning Chanel, basically saying why she's been gone and apologizing for what happened. Um, the only thing I have to say about this, and I do appreciate her, you know, being able to come out and say it. But from what I understand, people have still lost their money. And they didn't get their money back. It's really hard. I, I'm going to, child, I know it shouldn't be this way. It's really hard for me personally, me. It's hard for me to go back and trust someone and and be like, oh, okay. She says she's, you know, this is the explanation and rock with them. I'm, I'm not set up that way. I'm not that type of person. And it's not that I keep grudges. That's not what I'm saying. I don't keep grudges because I think that's unhealthy. I do know how to let stuff go. I'm just saying that I can accept someone's apology, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to be as trustworthy of that individual. Does that make sense? But I, with that being said, I wish her all the best. I honestly do. I don't know what she's doing now because I didn't watch the video in entirety. The last time I even heard about her is she was getting engaged to um, somebody named Patrick. She was She was finding out all of the wedding stuff and actually during that time excuse me during that time i actually had reached out to her because i was playing my planning my best friend's wedding and her colors their colors were similar and i invite i think i even invited her to the wedding but then stuff like I, i'm starting to rem remember this you guys it wasn't nothing serious but it was like in passing like hey if you're yeah did i invite her to the wedding i don't know if i invited her to the wedding let me not claim that let me not say that let me retract that i'm not sure if i invited her to the wedding but i did tell her about the wedding she wanted to know a little bit more about it this was years ago when my when I, myself and my best friend we all got married in the same year and then chanel diane got engaged and she was playing stuff because i even remember my best friend asking me about her like is you know did you talk to that other influencer i'm like yeah but she's back you guys like i said i wish her all the best all i have to say in general is that as we have to be careful and just be a little bit more cautious on where we plant our money. And I say plant because I do believe that whenever you are investing in something that's planting because you're planting a seed and hoping that it would grow, right? And so any type of investments, you need to be very careful. But from what I understand, she trusted some people that did her dirty. And in the end, anyone who brought bought into the business lost out also it's a very unfortunate event i'm pretty sure she has a bunch of lessons learned that's possibly a idea for her she should come out with some videos on lessons learned on what to do and what not to do when it comes to the type of business that she was trying to orchestrate so that's my opinion for whatever it's worth so anyway you guys what else i'm watching on youtube not a lot for some reason even though i'm, I'm sub from peach Peaches, 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 peaches. Yeah, no peaches. Um, peaches, Mac McIntyre, whatever. The one that's always talking about leaving her husband Wood, but she's still with him. I unsub from her, but she's still on my channel. But you know what my sister said recently that her top videos are of her nursing in public. Let me tell you something. I have nothing against nursing. I nursed JB's big ass for a good fifteen months. <laughs> my baby for 15 months straight i am a i am a huge advocate for nursing but out in public where like she's not covering up girl more power to you but that's a bit there's some creep there's some creepy people out there is what i'm saying there's some creepy men let me be very specific there are some creepy nasty ass men out there that would take advantage of that they don't care if it's a baby up there it's a it's a boob is, isn't that even like a fetish with men, men getting milked? You know what? Let, let's move on, child. That's some Let me get a drink. That's some nasty shit. Girl, what I'm watching on TV, Netflix, Hula. Okay, so, baby, <laughs> I want to watch that new movie that Todd and Candy came out with. But the one thing that kind of boggled my head, isn't it on Peacock, you guys? I can't remember what station it's on. The thing that boggled my head is apparently they used, meaning Todd and Candy, they used their own bed for the sex scenes. Hmm. 
That's nasty as hell. She said they did it for budgeting reasons. You know, uh, even though Candy got money, she's she's big on budgeting and hiring people, you know, Jerome or whoever. All those shady ass people that she hires and whatever, girl. So, interesting. Let me tell you something. I would be, why is that drawer open? Girl, hold on. But I'm pretty sure Candy made sure that um, they had a good, you know, uh, bed and a bad comforter set for that sex scene. And, she <laughs> and they took everything out. I think that's just... Okay, I understand that you got budget and ish. You know, not budget. I understand that you're trying to stay on budget. But that's... Don't you got another bed? I mean, doesn't Candy has that huge... She has several properties. Couldn't you, like, put another bed? Even do, like, a... A air mattress or something to have them humping on that girl. So they said the movie's good. I'll have to check it out. I don't know the name of it. I'm just like, you know, Todd and Candy, the singer, got a new movie out. I am so here for only murders in the building. It's like a mystery clue. It's almost like clue who's the murderer. Everybody could be the murderer at this point. It's on Hulu. Um, I watched an oldie but goodie, The Craft, the movie The Craft. And watching that movie, you guys, of course, I saw it in high school like everyone else. And my parents were like, ooh, we're going to pray for you. <laughs> it was interesting to see it now as an adult. Everyone who was in that movie is over 50 years old. You know, they are, you know, not no spring chickens anymore. But they still look good. Everyone that plays in the movie looks good, okay? And then I watched Unfaithful with, um, what is his name? Richard Greer and Diane Lane. And so, yeah, I think some of y'all have seen Unfaithful where the um, married wife has an affair with a French book um, seller or whatever. But the guy that played the French book seller is actually Hegley Berry's ex, Olivier Martinez. He's he's French. He is fine as hell in that movie. Now, he hasn't aged that well. And it's so funny how they cast him as to be the younger side piece but they are around the same age, him and um, Diane Lane. He's actually the same age as Haley Berry, but like I said, he hasn't aged that well, in my opinion. But hey, how I mean, how good can you look at 57? Let's just be honest. So that is it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I think it was always to all of my new subscribers. Take care. Bye.